наш сегодняшний вебинар, который посвящен о том, как же выбрать языковую школу за рубежом, на что обратить внимание при выборе, какие есть особенности в США и в Канаде в частности. Сегодня со мной вместе в вебинаре будут участвовать представители двух сильнейших языковых школ в Северной Америке. Это New England School of English, который находится в Бостоне, штате Массачусетс, и представители школы Евроцентр, которые находятся в Торонто, Ванкувере и в Сан-Диего. И они сегодня расскажут о том, что же такое программа Pathway, почему стоит рассматривать, выбирать языковые школы, если бы задумать о поступлении в университет. И, в принципе, дадут понять, какие есть опции, какие есть курсы английского, каким экзаменам можно готовиться, когда начинается, какая примерно стоимость. Если же вам нужен английский, например, не для учебы, хоть мы сегодня хотим сосредоточиться именно на этом, а также эти школы предоставляют прекрасные условия, методики преподавателей и для занятия и бизнесом английским, и английским для общих и разговорных целей. Поэтому, я думаю, каждый слушатель найдет что-то для себя интересное. Сначала немножечко расскажу, кто мы такие. Мы называемся Бюро международных образовательных программ «Прямой разговор». Мы находимся в Москве, в Санкт-Петербурге и в Торонто. У нас есть офис представительства. Соответственно, на всем пути вашего обучения, либо обучения ваших детей, начиная с языковых курсов, летних лагерей, и до поступления в университет и окончания вуза мы оказываем вам полную поддержку, включая зачисление, помощь с проживанием, визовую поддержку, перевод в учебные заведения, осуществление трансфера из языковой школы в колледж либо университет. Соответственно, на всем этапе мы вам помогаем. Работаем мы с рядом стран, в большинстве там говорящих, но сегодня мы поговорим именно про Северную Америку, про США и про Канаду, потому что интерес к этим странам в плане изучения английского с дальнейшей целью поступления в университет, он не стихает, несмотря на различные какие-то политические и прочие обстоятельства, и американские представители приезжают в Россию и хотят видеть у себя русских студентов. И сегодня вот более подробно нам представитель школы НЕСА расскажет о том, что же возможно изучать в Америке в данный момент. А я не буду более, наверное, рассказывать о том, кто мы такие. Я думаю, наши слушатели и так уже знакомы с нами, получают наши рассылки и знают о том, кто мы такие. Я передам слово Эшем из New England School of English, чтобы он уже рассказал о их прекрасной школе, чем она уникальна, какие программы, методики они предлагают. Good morning, everyone. I hope you can hear me. Okay. My name is Ashim Shankar, and I am uh, speaking to you from Cambridge, Massachusetts, which is very close to Boston, uh, in Harvard Square. So I'd like to thank you all for your interest in the New England School of English. I'd like to tell you a little bit about our school. I apologize, I can't tell you in Russian, but I'll do my best to uh, speak slowly and clearly for you. And feel free afterwards to ask me any questions. First of all, we can start by talking about the location of the New England School of English. We are located in Harvard Square, right next to Harvard University. So many of our students have the opportunity to uh, take advantage of the nearby lectures and uh, with the academic opportunities in our area. As you can see in on this slide here, uh, the New England School of English has received many awards over the years. Five years ago, we received a perfect score for our accreditation uh, from the uh, organization, organization ACCET, which is uh, very difficult to get. And we have also had members of our staff awarded uh, prizes from Harvard University. So we do maintain very close relationships with the university. On this next slide here, you can see a little bit about 
the details of our school. So the school was founded by Anna Schein, who is a who was trained at Harvard and has maintained academic connections with the, that school. Uh, and in addition to that, um, I myself and the director of this school, Martha Hall, the three of us, have also received education degrees, uh, master's degrees from Harvard University. One of the most important focuses of our school is on quality. More than anything else, we want to make sure that when our students come here, they are able to achieve their goals as they relate to English so that they can go out once they leave the school and do what they would like to do academically and professionally. The school was founded in 1990, so we've been running for 27 years in, uh, in the Boston-Cambridge area. And as I mentioned, we were accredited by uh, the Accrediting Council of Continuing Education and Training, ACCET. We have many points to our philosophy. One of the most important points is the first one, uh, commitment to excellence in the classroom. We believe in creating a challenging and stimulating curriculum for our students. And we believe that the recognition, in the recognition that each student arrives with unique abilities, needs, and goals, and that we try to provide a warm and supportive learning environment. Uh, and rooted in our belief in a student's ability to succeed. We have an appreciation for the power and value of kindness and compassion within our school, in our interactions with students and between students and teachers. And we also feel that language learning is incomplete without an understanding of the culture. So we not only teach language, but we also teach culture, and we also teach, give opportunities for students to engage with the culture inside of the classroom and outside of the classroom. So the question becomes, why Nessie? One of the main reasons, I believe, is academics. So many of our stu the students who come to our school have very strong academic profiles, and they wish to further their studies. They would like to be in a serious environment for studying English, but at the same time, they would like to enjoy their time in Boston. So they have a nice balance of being able to study and also get to know the area as well. Uh, and I think the location is great for that. Um, Boston is a very academic city. We have many universities in the area. As you know, um, not only Harvard, but also MIT are, are in the area, Boston University. Northeastern University, these are all very good schools, and a lot of many of our students do uh, strive to get into these schools. Uh, there's also, Boston is also a very historical city as far as the United States goes. It's one of the older cities in the United States, so uh, students do enjoy the historical feel of Boston. Uh, the housing is very convenient. Many students live very close to the area and have the opportunity to uh, come to the school within 10 to 15 minutes. On the next slide, you can see the names of the key educators. Anna Schein is the main founder of our school. Uh, Martha Hall is the director of our school. And the third person is me. Uh, I am the academic director of the school. Um, I can tell you a little bit about what I do. So uh, most of what I do is, uh, involves training teachers, developing curriculum, managing students' needs. I also give counseling to students about how best to use their time here and how best, even within the classroom or outside of the classroom, they are able to manage their time. In our programs, we have 10 levels of ability. So beginner student would start at level one. Our most advanced students finish at level 10. 
uh, they, students have an opportunity to take three kinds of classes. They can take a grammar class, a conversation and listening class, or a reading and writing class. If they are a full-time intensive student, they would take all three of those classes, but we also have students who take um, maybe two of those classes under our semi-intensive program. We also have programs for not only for students in academics, but also for business. Uh, many of our students who are already working in business or might have opp uh, opportunities or needs to use English in their job would come to take our business English program. Generally, we do ask that students who are taking those classes already have a uh, relatively advanced level of English ability. That would be a level eight or higher. But we do like to separate our classes by age so that we can ensure that people in senior positions are together in the same class and people in junior positions would be together as well so that they have the opportunity to speak to peers at their own level and to be challenged by others, not only from their industry, but also from other industries. We also have uh, other after school classes, including legal English. We often have uh, attorneys and judges coming to the school because they would like to develop their English abilities with relation to uh, vocabulary in the legal practice. So we teach classes based on the American legal system. We also have the uh, pronunciation classes for students who would like to improve their ability to, to produce sounds in English. We also have a university preparation class for any students who are getting ready to uh, attend an academic, uh, further their study in an academic setting. On this slide, you can see what the requirements for each of our classes are. Uh, for the pronunciation, vocabulary, reading and writing, conversation and listening, and grammar classes, we have levels 1 through 10, but for business English classes, that would be levels 8 through 10. We also have TOEFL classes for students who are interested in preparing uh, to take the TOEFL English exam, and that would be uh, for levels 9 and 10. On this slide, you can see an example of a typical uh, school day, a schedule that uh, we can see here the first class of the day. This is actually happening right now as I give this presentation is our grammar and idioms class. Uh, the next class is conversation and listening class. Uh, the third is reading and writing class. This is a sampling of our after school classes, as I mentioned, workplace communication legal English, pronunciation, and university preparation. These happen after the regular school day, and these are optional to attend. If we have five students who enroll in the course, we can run the course. But if we don't have five students, generally we are not able to. So it depends on uh, how many students we have interested in a given class. But these are after the regular class schedule. As you can see, it starts at uh, 3.30 p.m. On this next slide, you can see that our average class size is 12 students. And we try to divide our courses by level. And we also subdivide by age as much as we can. Every class is 90 minutes long. And students get a different placement level for grammar. Uh, conversation and reading and writing. So that means you could be a level five in grammar, but if your conversation skills are very good, maybe you could be a level six in conversation. And if you need extra help in reading and writing, maybe you could be a level four. So if you are given a level, you won't take the same level for all three classes unless your skills are at that level. We give a different level for each class. Here you can see some pictures um, of students in our classroom. This is what you can, just so you can get a sense of what our, our school looks like.
This is a sample of a student certificate. If a student finishes at their time at Nessie, um, they would receive a certificate like this. This is the location of Nessie. You can see we're just um, in, right on the edge of Boston, so it's very accessible to many of the exciting areas downtown. And as I mentioned, we're surrounded by the Harvard University campus, very close to MIT, and it's very ex uh, accessible to subway and buses, so public transportation is not a problem. And I don't know if you've ever been to this area, but we have a lot of great restaurants, cafes, bookshops, and boutiques. It's, it's a very nice area to spend your time uh, between and after classes. This is what Harvard Square looks like. The, the building that you can see on the left is the building that we're located in. This is a view of the, the Charles River, which is a five-minute walk from where we are. It's very beautiful, especially at this time of year. And this is a picture of Harvard. Uh, I believe that's Harvard Business School. Yeah, it's the Harvard Business School campus, and that's also very close to us. This is what Harvard Square looks like at night. Here you can see the MIT campus. Another MIT building. Overall, you can see that Boston has a lot of very nice landmarks and beautiful areas to visit. And we encourage our students not only to take advantage of being in the city, but also to visit the surrounding areas. If they have an opportunity to go to New York, it's very easy to go to New York. It's only three or four hours away um, by bus. And some people like to go skiing. Some people like to go snowboarding or hiking around this time of year. Students like to visit the nearby towns because it's very beautiful in the fall with the leaves changing. Uh, so you really have a good mix of uh, being in, accessible to the city and also to the countryside. Other than that, mostly I have pictures here, um, but I, can, I know I might be running over time a little bit, so I, I want to give the other presenters as much time as they need. So if you have any questions that you would like to ask me, uh, I'm happy to answer any questions that you have about the school. Uh, I, I do thank you very much for your time and attention today. It's been a great pleasure, and I hope that um, you will have some interest in, in contacting us here at the New England School of English. So thank you very much. OK, I see a question. Can I use a tourist visa for studying? Uh, yes, it is possible to use a tourist visa to study in the United States. Now, probably the most important thing to be aware of is that if, you're, if you have a tourist visa and you're studying here, we wouldn't be able to have you study full-time. You can only study part-time, and that would be in our semi-intensive program. So that would mean that you could take a, a maximum of uh, three hours of class each day. So that would allow you to take two out of the three classes. So some students would take grammar and conversation class, and some students would take conversation and reading and writing class. So it's possible to do uh, a mix of the, the three, uh, but you wouldn't be able to do all three classes. But we do often have students come here to study uh, under tourist visas. I hope that answers your question. Are there any other questions? How much is the tuition fee? So uh, for the right now, if you're able to sign up before the end of the year, the tuition fee for three classes would be $1,975. That is, that's uh, just for the classes. Um, housing would uh, be an additional fee depending on whether you decided to do a homestay or dormitory. Unfortunately, I don't have the information on the rates for that. Um, if you were doing a uh, semi-intensive course with two classes, um, 
I'm sorry, I'm not able to recall the the amount. I believe it's uh, $1,600, but um, if you want to double check on that, please feel free to contact us and we can we can confirm the correct rates. Um, do we have, an, uh, I have another question. Do you have an accommodation service? Um, I'm not sure precisely what is meant by an accommodation service. Uh, we have a housing office which manages housing for students. So we have three dormitories for students and we split those by age. Uh, we also arrange housing for homestays. So for housing accommodations, yes, we do indeed have a, a service. Um, we do have a, a manager that uh, matches students with places to live and oftentimes students might choose to live with a family in Boston, uh, which is a nice experience because you get to uh, practice English with native speakers and get home cooked meals. Some people like to live in the dormitory because it's easier to make friends with other students. Um, and you have, you're right in the middle of the city. So our housing office can take your needs and uh, requests into consideration and find the best match for you. Are there any other questions? Okay. Well, if, if, you, if there are no uh, other questions, I, I'd like to thank you all very much for your interest. And please feel free to uh, contact me. Thank uh, you. Through the, uh, new thank you for joining us today. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Bye. And I wish you all the very best. Have a good day. Так, а сейчас мы переходим к нашим канадским партнерам, которые находятся в Торонто, Ванкувере, и есть еще кампус школы в Сан-Диего в США. А я думаю, сейчас Надя и Люси к нам присоединятся. А еще хотела бы добавить, в конце, после всех презентаций и вопросов и ответов, мы либо здесь покажем видео, которое мы сами сняли, когда наш директор был и в НЕСА, и в школе Евроцентр, либо на нашем YouTube-канале очень много различных видео, такого лайвстрима, наши впечатления от школы, впечатления студентов, которые нас в данный момент обучаются, чтобы у вас создалось такое более обширное представление о том, что же это за место, где находится, кто там учится, кто преподает, что из себя все это представляет, не только на картинках, но и в таком более 3D-формате видео. Так, сейчас мы попробуем. У нас есть вопрос в чате, хочу приехать летом на учебу в Канаду. Как я могу поступить в университет, не сдавая TOEFL или IELTS? Как раз сейчас об этом нам расскажут наши коллеги из школы Евроцентр. А сейчас, я думаю, они уже должны подключиться, потому что Ашим закрыл свое видео. И я думаю, сейчас я передам слово Наде и Люси, которые ответят на ваши вопросы и обязательно все расскажут. So, okay, we can hear you and see you. Hey everybody, and I'm really happy to be here to present Euro Centers Vancouver, Toronto, and San Diego. We are owned by Oxford International um, Education Group, which is based in the UK. Um, however, our branding is Eurocenters. We have been operating as a Eurocenter school, goodness, for over 15 years in Vancouver and Toronto. Um, San Diego is a recent addition to our schools. We're really proud of the um, quality that we provide our students and the student testimonials after they leave and the jobs that they get because of their English um, shows and testifies and demonstrates how much they have actually learned here, not just in terms of English, but particularly for their pathways as well. So let us continue. Um, 
if your centers is in three fabulous cities, Vancouver, which has been rated one of the best cities to live, Toronto, which is an exciting hub and the center of Canada, much to the much, much to everybody's uh, displeasure, but it is a big city. Um, and San Diego, one of the most desirable cities in the United States, all safe cities, um, downtown locations, very multicultural. Um, you can find absolutely everything in these cities. So I'm going to talk generally about our three schools because the programs are identical, and as well Lucy. So perhaps Lucy should just come and say hello to you right now. Hi, good morning, everybody. Um, I am fortunate enough this morning to be in Toronto with Nadia, the centre manager here in Eurocentres Toronto. I am usually based in beautiful Vancouver on the west coast of Canada. Um, so I'm very happy to be here. And we're going to be talking to you, as Nadia said, about our wonderful programs, our wonderful locations, and especially about the huge opportunities for pathways in Canada. Great. All right. So the thing about pathways is it allows students to pursue an education in Canada or in the United States. We have a solid English background, um, great training, excellent teaching staff. We are accredited by all the local, regional, and national language bodies in the three centers. Um, we are all, all the schools are IELTS test centers. So we offer tests four times a month, the IELTS test, according to the British Council regulations. Um, we, I like to say that both the Toronto and Vancouver schools um, are very boutique-like, particularly San Diego, where not that large way or anonymous, we know every student and not more importantly we know every student's desires what they need to do so this is a little bit about our um, pathway program you can take an intensive program which is 25 lessons a week or 30 lessons a week and this is intensive IELTS preparation as well as Cambridge preparation really good strong academic preparation for university. We are concentrating on critical thinking, reading, writing. Naturally, people come because they want to speak as well. Not only are we learning the language and the culture in the classroom, but more importantly, a very active and vibrant social program. So, let's continue. We make a guarantee that if you have not achieved the target language level, you can study for free after your program. What does this mean? You have to attend a minimum number of classes, of course, at least you have to have 90% attendance. There are a few other regulations, but we are in the business of not making, of, of ensuring that students succeed. Your success is our success. So if we see students floundering or struggling, we can provide extra study for them, private one-on-one -on -one classes as well. And this will be absolutely at our expense. So one of our unique selling points. OK. So the interesting thing, when you come to Eurocenters, we're all really passionate about our schools. Um, you are met and greeted very warmly. We have accommodation services. So during the initial interview, you're going to be met by one of our senior teachers who's going to assess your, your, your speaking skills. And in the part of the questions is to ask you about your home state experience or your residence options, because we provide those in all three cities. And then when you've done your um, assessment test, you are put into the proper level. Eurocenters is really proud to boast the fact that we have international students from all over the world. We try to maintain a fantastic nationality mix. So teachers, 
upon receiving new students, will be able to read their needs analysis. What is each student here for? Why are they studying? And then they customize their courses or their classes following the curriculum for the needs of each student. So we have something called our aims at every level. And the our aims is really designed to ensure that students are getting the kinds of language they need. So they're clear learning aims. Every teacher is responsible to put their lesson plan in the classroom. So accountability, transparency. We have regular assessment. There are twice monthly speaking tests and every four weeks a written test. But assessment is also on a continuous basis. And we're constant that our teachers are, are have been instructed how to assess students and there's a lot of feedback. So once a week students are going to meet with their teachers and talk about what they've managed to learn, what they're struggling with, what they'd like to see more of. So we're really concerned about individual um, individual success here and and an individual program for getting to your target. We have learning centers in all the schools and you can borrow books. We have a fabulous online platform. So there's lots of study either at home um, or at school when you're not in class. We have tutorials and as I said there are regular reviews about this, the programs. All right. So I'm going to turn this over to Lucy now. She's going to talk a little bit about the levels and our pathways. Thank you, Nadia. Makes me want to study in Canada. <laughs> um, so pathway programs. Uh, it's an extremely exciting time to be an international student in Canada. Um, and it's not always about just learning English, uh, about improving your language skills. Because if you want to study or apply to a university or a college in Canada or the US, um, there are some very important skills that you need to achieve. Um, and there's an excellent question I see in the chat room here. Um, I'm sorry, I don't know your name, but your question about how can I enter a university without taking TOEFL or IELTS. This is one of our key selling points for our pathway programs. And first of all, let me just say you have very good written English already, so I think you're going to go far. Um, but uh, that's still come to visit us, of course. We have a lot of partners, and we'll be talking about that a little bit later, that allow our Eurocenter students to enter the college or university uh, without taking a TOEFL or IELTS exam in Canada. Um, so we'll come to that in a moment. One of our big uh, programs that we're very proud of are the Pathway programs. Now, of course, you would think you have to be a certain level to start a Pathway program. Yes, that is true, because you do need to have uh, good English skills to enter university. However, with Euro centers in Vancouver, Toronto, and San Diego, you can enter uh, a pathway program at any level and at any time. On any week, you can start one of our programs. And it's, it's very, very important, and we're very passionate about this point. So here you will see we have what we call pre-pathway for students who are perhaps a little lower level. So you would take an online test just so that we can assess your level on a very, a very basic level to see how good your English is. If you're a little bit higher, you may be in what we call our Pathway 1 program. And if you have a, a good level, you could start in what we call Pathway 2. The idea is also that if you started in pre-Pathway, that you can uh, finish in Pathway 2 at a very high level, advanced level of uh, English in order to enter university. So here is just just for a couple of seconds. You can see that we have actually we actually have uh, eight levels, um, sorry ten levels. Um, this is just to show you how we would work out your how many weeks you would need to take. So for example, if you were uh, if you take our test and you're a level four, we would figure out that you would need X number of weeks in order to uh, reach a certain level. And, and our levels are something that we're very proud of. And uh, I'm just going to pass to Nadia so she can briefly explain how that works. So Eurocenters has been developing language for over 60 um, years, how to teach language, how to prepare students. And our research um, has allowed us to make comparisons between Eurocenters levels 
and our scales of proficiency. So for all our, the majority of our pathway partners, students need to achieve and pass level eight. Level eight is the equivalent of a 6.5 to seven on the IELTS test. Also, we have the same comparison <laughs> for TOEFL. Um, for example, on TOEFL, it would be IB um, of 93. So really, all the levels have corresponding test results. So we know for students, says, I took TOEFL five years ago or two years ago, this was my score or IELTS, we can also calculate. If you've got a five in IELTS, for example, you're going to be a Eurocenters level five. We know that. But so um, it's really important that students know that they can do a pre-test. Um, when we get to that level of, um, of the application process, we'll discuss that. Okay. So this is just a sample of our um, schedules. As you can see, Monday to, oh, actually I'm going to say Tuesday to Friday, classes start at 8.50 in the morning and end at 12.40. Monday we start 50 minutes later because the first class of each week doesn't begin until 1.40. These are 20 classes a week. We do intensive IELTS, Cambridge, um, FCE, CAE preparations are really academic in the higher levels. We also run a lower level IELTS, but all students do the basic 20. For the Pathways program, we encourage students or we demand that students do 25 weeks. And you can do um, the Pathway program on a 12 week basis, 24 week basis depends on your level of intake so, or your pre-arrival test, I should say. Um, some of the classes that we offer in the afternoon, these are the lectures that students can, cho can choose. Fluency, which is really based on listening and speaking. We want to make sure that people are accurately speaking. At the higher levels, presentation skills, seminars are critical. Um, academic vocabulary, plus in addition, we have the academic reading and writing. These are five times a week. Students can change electives. They just have to um, inform the director on the Friday that they'd like to change. There's also business, TOEIC, um, academic reading and writing, writing and speaking. So lots of all the skills are covered for the test purposes. There's another one. This is for the higher level students. We have exam skills, so we teach a class where, where we're really concerned on broadening and increasing the depth of the university. So I see here we have a question. Um, oh, you did that one already. So yeah, you can write IELTS with us if you come in the summer, if you are not here long enough, or you can access seamlessly if you achieve our level eight for university. Okay. Okay, so um, this, the, the, this last part of the presentation is going to be purely focusing on, on pathways, which is why I know you're all here today listening. As I said, it's very exciting to be studying at a university or college in Canada right now. Many, many international students are coming. Um, and, you know, as Nadia was saying, there are so many academic skills that you need to um, master. So one of the things that we would teach our students at Eurocenter is in uh, either the, the three locations is how to present for example it's a crucial skill at university or college so to do what we are doing now what our colleagues in Boston and, and uh, around here are doing right now is to present in English um, it isn't easy even when you are a native speaker um, so this is something we take very seriously the skills to be successful at college it is not just about um, being accepted into university Yes, everybody wants that letter that says congratulations. We want our students to be successful during university, whether that's two years or four years. And you can see here on this slide, this is for Canada, which is what we're focusing on today. There are different types of study. There are what we call colleges, which can be anything from one to three years. Um, but college and university can be the same word as well. So Please do not think that college is, is lesser than the university. There can be four-year colleges as well. Um, 
but generally speaking, a university will offer a, um, a you know a traditional four-year bachelor degree, um, and there are, there are, there's variety, variations in between of what you can achieve in in Canada, um, which we will come to. Now, one thing that everybody is excited about for Canada are the options during study and after study as well. So some of our partners and some of our non-partners will offer what is called co-op programs. And that means something like an internship. So you may have a program, let's say, in tourism management, let's say, and part of your um, program is to have a certain amount of time off campus working. And you will be paid for that. It is a very, it's a, it's a key point for Canada um, and many, many of our partners and non-partners, as I said, will offer what we call co-op programs in your specific area of study. It is also possible, um, if you are studying at a certain institution, which we can give you more information about at another time, to work off campus. So of course you can work on campus for 20 hours a week, maybe in the library or the cafeteria. But in Canada, you can also um, very easily if you're studying at the right place, work off campus for 20 hours a week and be paid for that, obviously. Um, so that's a very attractive selling point for Canada and uh, studying with Eurocenters, where we can really sort of help you achieve that. Just very, very briefly, there is something in Canada called a postgraduate work permit. Um, all of us here uh, are fortunate to live in Canada. Um, I am uh, very recent. In the last five years, I moved to Canada. Um, students, if they study for a certain amount of time at certain institutions, are eligible for what is called a postgraduate work permit following their study, which can lead to immigration, permanent residency in Canada. And of course, there are regulations, and you can find information online or through Eurocenters. But it is a huge, uh, a very attractive point about Canada is that by studying here, by simply applying, you can it can lead to permanent uh, residency in Canada. We won't focus so much on the US today, um, but it, it is fairly similar, but the, it is uh, not as simple when it comes to immigration. Um, the, the study pathway is pretty much the same. You can have two-year colleges, you can have four-year colleges, four-year universities. There are some fantastic opportunities if you study at our school in San Diego to uh, follow the pathway and end up at a, at a wonderful university or college. And again, this is similar to Canada. It is possible to work on campus. Uh, working off campus is a little more tricky. Um, it's, not as, uh, it's not as common as in Canada, but it, it is possible with um, uh, something called optional practical training following study. OK, I want to spend just a couple of minutes before we finish up on the wonderful opportunities by studying at one of our partners at Eurocenters. Um, of course, we have four-year university partners, um, which are wonderful, where you can have your apply for your bachelor degree or even your master degree. Uh, but of course, as everybody knows, or maybe you don't know, there are two-year colleges in the US and Canada. We partner with these uh, institutions. And I've given you three examples here just to show you how wonderful the opportunities are. So we, we look at Vancouver, Toronto, and San Diego. Let's say you have an aim of studying at the very, very famous University of British Columbia, which is currently in the top 40 universities in the world. Um, Pavel, we'll come to this question at the end, so thank you for that question. Um, by studying at one of our partners, which is a two-year college in Vancouver, it is on the campus of the University of British Columbia. It is called Corpus Christi College, and our colleagues can give you more information about this. But basically, you are taking identical classes as you would take directly at University of British Columbia for two years. And then you transfer to years three and four at UBC, University of British Columbia. The cost saving is huge, which always makes parents extremely happy. So for example, one year of tuition at our partner college is around, uh, let's say, 23,000 Canadian for tuition. If you were studying directly at the University of British Columbia, it would cost you around 45,000 Canadian dollars. So the price is half for the same thing. 
much smaller classes, maybe a class of 380 students at the university, maybe a class of 30, 30 at our partner. And if this is the same for Toronto with a wonderful college called Seneca, um, you could enter the University of Toronto, York University, famous universities after two years by transferring. And in San Diego, very, very similar system. We have a wonderful partner very close to our school in San Diego called Miracosta College, a two-year college. Uh, after two years, the savings are the same. Um, you could transfer to somewhere you've all heard of. For example, the University of uh, California, Los Angeles, UCLA. I'm sure everyone's heard of that. To finish your uh, third and fourth year of your bachelor degree. As the question was earlier, do you need to take TOEFL or IELTS, especially in Canada, to enter these partners? No. You would need to achieve anywhere from level 7 or levels 8 at Eurocenters. You do not need to take the IELTS exam. Of course, we are experts in the IELTS uh, testing, uh, so you, you can take IELTS to uh, apply to another institution, but by achieving level 7 or 8 at Eurocenters, you can enter this is just an example, many of our partner universities without taking an official exam, um, which is a wonderful opportunity. So we're running a little bit out of time. We have so much to say. Um, so I'll briefly just finish this. The application process to university or college is simple. We are there to help the student at absolutely every stage. If you are still in Russia, we won't be able to help you overseas, you can apply from Russia. When you come to the, the schools, the Eurocenter schools, we have designated pathway people to help you. So I would help you in Toronto, UC in Vancouver, and Alfred in San Diego. Um, we help with the application process, we guide you, we find out what your program of study is, we do all the preparation, we have people coming in to give presentations about the colleges or universities we submit the application. There's a res there is a registration fee, of course, that has to be paid. You will receive a conditional letter of acceptance, uh, which is used to get your visa to come and study in combination with ours. And then, of course, you apply for your permit. Now, um, Pavel's question is, <clears throat> how much does a, a pathway program cost? Well. Depending, if you're coming for 12 weeks, an intensive program, 25 classes a week, you're looking at 3,400 approximately Canadian dollars. Um, this is, of course, much less than the United States. If you're coming for 30 classes a week for 12 weeks, 4,050 approximately. Um, of course, I can break that all down later. You see there's another... Can I transfer to the U.S. University after pathways in Canada? Um, not as easily as transferring from college to university in Canada, but every application. So because we've got the school in San Diego, they will recognize any post-secondary education you've done, so college or university. You will not have to repeat everything. They will do an evaluation. And then if I fail any course, can I keep studying? Or do I get expelled? Very good question. So colleges are much more lenient than universities, much easier. Um, so at Eurocenters, we really help the student at every stage. You're really not left on your own. College, there's a little more independence. They also have an interest to ensure that international students get the help they need. You won't be expelled, but at university, you may uh, failing one course is not a problem. If you fail the entire year, you may have to sit out a year. So then that becomes an issue. Okay. I think there's one more slide. So just very, very briefly to finish. I'm sorry we've taken more time. Um, but we do have so much to say. It's so exciting to be here in Canada. Um, this is some of our partners. Um, our colleagues can give you more information about what is offered. You can see as a whole range of partners, and these are universities, four-year universities, two-year colleges around Canada, so in Toronto, uh, in Nova Scotia, in British Columbia, um, in Texas, in California, in Tennessee. Um, we have film schools, we have career colleges, we have regular universities. Um, 
we have something for everyone, um, all ranges of abilities, all ranges of levels, and these partners will allow you to achieve a, a Eurocenter's high level instead of taking IELTS or, or TOEFL. Um, so wonderful, wonderful opportunities, and we really, we can't say enough about how exciting it is to be here. You really, it, it is a wonderful place to be, and uh, we wish you very well with your studies. We wish you a lot of luck, and we really do hope to see you in one of our locations. All right, there's one other question. Um, is transfer guaranteed on what conditions? Absolutely. All the colleges have agreements with the universities. So as long as you meet the academic requirements of the college, you have no problem entering a university. Okay? Are there any more questions? No? We are always available um, and through your agents. I want to thank you. I just want you to, to let you know also. We're really passionate. Um, we have a great program. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Как вы видите, опций очень много, и такие программы они действительно интересны и уникальны тем, что вы можете действительно сэкономить средства, деньги, потому что, находясь в стране, можно узнать разные опции, варианты, посмотреть те же самые колледжи и программы, познакомиться с кампусом, что предлагается. Тем самым, соответственно, также получив в конце диплом престижного университета, занимаясь по той же программе, но при этом соответственно, сэкономить деньги, поучиться в колледж и потом уже перейти в университет на последние два года. Может быть, если ваш средний балл в колледже будет достаточно хорош, то вы сможете получить уже в дальнейшем какую-то стипендию от скидку на обучение от самого вуза. А для того, чтобы вы имели право обучаться по таким пассовым программам, у нас есть вопрос, какой минимальный возраст. Да, спасибо, Кристина, что ответили. Я хочу обратить внимание на то, что самое важное для наших студентов является эта виза. Как уже сказал Ашим, что в США, чтобы учиться по туристической визе, ваша интенсивность курса не должна превышать 18 часов в неделю. Соответственно, если ваше занятие более интенсивное, то вам нужна студенческая виза F1. И хороша она тем, что вам на руки, вашим основным документом для пребывания в США и будет являться форма I-20, I-20, которую выдает школа. Соответственно, если у вас есть на руках действующий I-20, когда вы находитесь в стране, вы там можете легально находиться, если даже ваша въездная выездная виза в США закончилась. То есть вы просто когда вернетесь в Россию и снова захотите полететь в США, вам нужно будет получить новую въездную визу. Что еще дает Какие еще дают преимущества наличия формы I-20? Если вы вдруг поехали на месяц и решили, что вы не подняли ваш уровень английского языка на требуемый вам, соответственно, вы можете внутри страны, не выезжая, продлить I-20, находиться, также оставаться, учиться на территории Соединенных Штатов. Помимо этого, вы можете, не выезжая из США, сделать трансфер I-20, если, например, вы поступили в колледж, либо также в университет, после, соответственно, языковой школы в один из вузов-партнеров, либо в любой другой. И языковая школа, и университет в этом вопросе помогают. Соответственно, можно сделать трансфер I-20, также не покидая территорию страны, соответственно, не платя за перелеты, какие-то сопутствующие, связанные с этим расходом. А в Канаде ситуация немножечко другая. Это сам да, зависит не от интенсивности курса, а от длительности программы. Соответственно, если ваша программа свыше полугода языковая, то вам, скорее всего, потребуется получать уже полноценную учебную визу, либо если вы поступаете на вот эту комбинированную программу, про которую говорили наши партнеры, то есть когда у вас идет английский плюс условное зачисление в колледж либо в университет партнерский, то есть где будет стать одним из условий, что вы сдадите английский на нужный уровень, тогда вы подаетесь на студенческую визу Study Permit, то есть разрешение на учебу, который уже дает вам преимущество. Опять же, вы можете продлеваться внутри страны, вы можете работать не только на территории кампуса, но и вне кампуса частично. И уже, опять же, продлеваться внутри Канады при переходе на 3-4 курс, курс университета и впоследствии подаваясь на получение открытой рабочей визы по окончании академической программы. Если вдруг есть вопросы к нам, как к агентству, либо у нас еще 
как вы можете видеть, есть представитель русскоговорящий Кристин, языковой школы Oxford International Group, а именно Евроцентр. Соответственно, вы можете задать либо ей напрямую. После презентации, как follow-up, всем зарегистрировавшимся, мы обязательно вышлем контакты презентации, запись данного вебинара. Если вдруг кто-то что-то не услышал, не понял, у вас будет возможность пересмотреть. Также будут добавлены субтитры, если вдруг что-то не поняли во время презентации или, может быть, не услышали. Также, я думаю, если наши партнеры будут рады провести онлайн-тестирование, про которое они говорили предварительно, чтобы определить ваш текущий уровень и сколько вам необходимо недель для того, чтобы набрать тот или иной балл. Я думаю, на этом мы, наверное, будем закругляться. Если вопросов нет, будем рады вам помочь. Хорошего вечера. И до свидания.